Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 204 of the Stone Age Gamer podcast for the week of June 1st, 2018. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is, tonight is awkward stage presentation Dan Ryan. You know, Chris, maybe I'm old fashioned, but women voters? Welcome to planet Mars. I'll be over in my spaceship. <laughs> I believe that fire is magic and it scares me a lot. E3 is almost here, <laughs> and Dan and I are very excited to keep our hype levels higher than they reasonably should be. I believe there's only one true god, and his name is Zorgo, and he lives in this lake. Uh, we're going to look back at our favorite <laughs> E3 moments, but before we go any further... Here's your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Just include the words Stone Age Gamer in the subject line. You can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or uh, just whittle some wood and whistle as you walk away. Um, <laughs> we'd be happy with, with any of those things, listeners. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but uh, it seems to me that when the giant who holds up the earth dies, we are, we are screwed! screwed. <laughs> Oh, uh, state yeah. jokes. Indeed. Anyway. All right. Well, let's um, uh, first and foremost, top the episode, uh, just have to, I want to say a few words because uh, Ted Dabney, the co-founder of Atari, has passed away. Um, pretty important figure in the history of video games. Uh, obviously, co-founder of Atari, uh, Nolan Bushnell, took, took sole credit for that for a good long time. And... Uh, um, I never met Ted. We talked about him on the show a while back when his house burned down. Right. And there were, we were, they, uh, Lenny Herman, the author of Phoenix, did a GoFundMe for him, which Ted then uh, turned down. He said, no, I'll, I'll take care of it. I appreciate it, but uh, I'll take care of it because I guess that was just the kind of guy Ted Dabney was. But uh, he was 81 years old and um, he wasn't in great health from what I've come to understand. And, uh, it's sad that he passed, but, you know, 81, it's not bad. It's not a bad run. Yeah, not a bad and run. And he added a spoke to the wheel, a giant spoke to the wheel. Yeah, seriously, like, this dude changed the changed the world. <laughs> so. so, I mean, that you really, really can't ask for much more than that. And he is, he did go through a large portion of his life not getting the credit that he deserved, but, um... But getting it now and and starting it's it's very much a uh, like a almost a, a Bob Kane and Bill Finger um, kind of situation. Yeah, and um, you know I, I, I think even history, now though there's a lot of outlets that are just getting the facts completely wrong about him. Well, sure, one but thing I think as, as time goes on, we're going to start to get um, more clarity into what he was actually responsible for, and um, yeah. It will continue to paint Mr. Bushnell in a somewhat of a more negative light, but yeah, and not that you know, not that no one's necessarily a bad person. He's doing no, plenty of no. stuff, and apparently the two of them were going to like make amends. They were going to have lunch together or something, and just it just never happen. happened. Yeah. yeah, and it was like a recent thing. Like they were they were going to get together, but uh... well, it's one of those things. Like you start to hit. I imagine there's a, a certain age that you start to hit where you go. I don't know if I want to go to my grave with enemies, you know? Like, yeah, I, like, I got, Ted I'm not, <laughs> knew he didn't have a lot of time left, you know? Yeah, like, it, you, when you're in the situation where you're not buying any green bananas anymore, <laughs> um, you know, you kind of start to, to put some of those things to bed, as it were. Indeed. Uh, so, so uh, all of our respects to Ted and his family, and, uh, well, for everything he's done for the video game industry, Ted Dabney. Uh, on to some brighter news. There were just a, a couple of headlines that really caught my eye over the last couple of days, particularly today. Uh, today was, uh, we got a bunch of information about Mega Man 11. Did you see all that stuff, Dan? I did. Yeah. I'm excited. Comes I'm excited too. On my birthday, Chris. That is wonderful. For those who don't know, Dan's birthday is October 2nd. That's right. In the day and of our Lord. The day of our Lord. The most glorious of days. Lord, Lord, why we? Me and, uh, me and Kelly Ripa. 
right there in the Venn diagram of October 2nd birthdays. Well, shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know what so, that has to do with anything, but it's true, and it I kind of enjoy it. Uh, so, so Mega Man 11 looks fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I still don't like his running animation. Like, that's, that's still what's bothering me. And now having seen more footage from the game, I can nail down, yes, that is what's bothering me. Like, right. remember when the first trailer came out, we were looking at, like, something's just off? It's totally yeah, his running animation. That's what yeah, it is. It's a little weird. Yeah. So, but they could still fix that. It's still, they got, remember, we're months away, and uh, it's it's looking pretty nice. We got to see a couple of uh, the Robot Masters. That dude that we saw before was is officially Block Man, and uh, he looks super cool when he gets all giant. And uh, I think Fuse Man looks amazing. I like uh, I like Block Man. Fuse yeah, Man like looks Block very Man. cool. I like Block Man. He yeah, uh, Block Man it reminds really cool. me of um, oh, what the fuck was this thing's name? The Mega Man Two thing. The giant clay looking monster. Are you talking about the Mega Man 1, the Yellow Devil? Yes, Yellow Devil. Thank there you. you go. Sorry, I said Mega Man 2. Mega Man 1. How dare you? I know. He looks cool. Like, I've always liked that aspect of, of Mega Man games, like the things building upon themselves and, and having an interesting way to fight them and take them apart. Yeah. It's, it's very cool. I think this dual gear system looks really cool. Like I'm just I'm I'm totally into this and, and spending a lot of time with the legacy collection, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh it's just really got me in such a good mood for this. Like I was so excited about all this stuff. The new Mega Man Amiibo that they announced looks so good. It uh, does, but the price They fixed it already. Yeah. Even still I was, I was real pissed at the price. I pre ordered it. Because I was like, all right, 60 bucks. That sounds good. This is probably a $50 game, so I'm in. Because I didn't, you know, put any thought into it. You know, it was right. like, it's a new retail Mega Man game. So sure. I could see Capcom charging 50 bucks for that. So 60 bucks. Yay, that's a pretty good deal. You get an Amiibo and a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then I looked at the price, and the actual retail price for this game is 30 bucks. And I was like, wow. So the, the Amiibo collection is twice the price. That's too much. That's uh, way too much. But I thought to myself, right, this is this is probably some sort of placeholder price. I'm gonna just leave this pre order here because they don't charge you until you know the the thing ships. Right. It is unfortunately a GameStop exclusive, and I hate giving them money. But I really wanted that amiibo, and so I, I stuck with it. And then um, Paul from uh, Too Many uh, Not Too Many Games ABGC. Uh, he messaged me earlier saying that they already adjusted the price. Now the special edition is fifty bucks. <clears throat> And that, Which, I, that makes I mean, sense, because an Amiibo was about 15 bucks, so just yeah. the game and the Amiibo would have cost me 45 so 5 bucks more gets me a bunch of stickers and a patch and that cool cleaning cloth that looks like the enemy select screen. That, that makes is pretty sense. cool. So th that price actually adds up to me, because if they do wind up selling that Amiibo separately, it's going to cost me 15 bucks, and I'm not going to not buy that. It's too damn cool. So I don't uh, like it that much better than the one I already have. I do. I don't like it that much better than the one I already have, but it's different enough that I can totally warrant buying it. Because it's like the one from Smash Brothers is the Smash Brothers Mega Man, which is just this totally unique creation based off of the Mega Man sprite. You know, he doesn't yeah. look like any Mega Man artwork. This looks like Mega Man artwork, Mega Man. So I have no problem putting that next to my other Mega Man. <laughs> that just that just seems awesome to me. I, I wish have they do no more of them. problem justifying that to myself. Yeah, no, I justified that in no time. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. I'm off the I, I'm off the amiibo problem train. You know, I was right. limiting myself to one thing. I did that for a year or two. I'm good. I'm just going to get everything that I everything that I want now. Of course, they're still like hard to get, but yeah. Well, and there haven't been too many like crazy new ones that are like, oh, you have to have this one. You know? Yeah, I kind of wanted the, after playing Breath of the Wild, I actually kind of wanted to get some of those, but I haven't really seen them around, and I didn't, the few that I did, I didn't really want to spend 15 bucks on them. But, eh, neither here nor there. Mega Man 11 looks amazing, and I'm so excited about it. It just, the levels, the boss fights, they just look like good, wholesome, classic Mega Man. And modern, too. Because um, nothing against 9 and 10, but going back to that retro well, especially, you know, I'm in the middle of seven right now mm -hmm. in my replay, and I just love that that series did eventually start evolving. And then the fact that they went back to that 8-bit well, as cool as it was, I kind of missed, like, 
getting into the like like Mega Man powered up, which oh, when I listened to um Game Explained did a video, uh, Ash Polson was talking about he got to spend like a bunch of hours with Mega Man uh, Eleven, and he said it plays like powered up, nice. which is so good. If you've never played powered up on PSP, do so. It's really good, and that is that's high praise, as Dan and I will attest. It is, it is an excellent excellent version. Good good times. Uh, the only the other piece of news I wanted to touch on was that today Tommy Tallarico announced that he bought um like a controlling stake in Intellivision and he's launching For like a new Intellivision. Thirteen bucks. Yeah, so uh, fifteen weird. fifty at least. <laughs> but uh now he's he's launching a new Intellivision and did you read anything about this today? I did not. Alright, this is this is wild, all right. So you've got the Atari box, right? Sure. Which is this new Linux system that seems way too expensive for what it can what it can do, uh, and it's 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 a Linux box. They released the specs, and they're not super impressive, and there doesn't seem to be any exclusive software for it. Um, I think it looks neat, but I don't really want to drop what is it like three hundred about three hundred dollars on this thing, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really like. They haven't sold me on the Atari box by a long shot. No. Meanwhile. Tommy Tallarico is like, so I want to release a new Intellivision. I'm not out to take on Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft because that's stupid. That is a ridiculous notion. It is a ridiculous notion. You hear that, Atari? That's a ridiculous notion. Uh, So what he wants to do with the Intellivision is he remembers what it was like being a kid and what video games used to be. They were simple games, so the system's not going to be super powerful. Uh, there were simple games that you sat around and played with your family. It's a family type thing, similar to like the kind of audience that they captured with the Wii. Except I don't think they're aiming for any sort of motion control stuff. I think they're just aiming for simple, fun family games. Right. Simple, easy to pick up and play. Anybody can kind of understand it right away. Exactly. And that right there, that's what you do, because that's the audience that's untapped. Right. That's the audience that N- Nintendo tapped into with the Wii, but as they con- t- continued to get more and more complex with these things, that went away, you know? And now they're back. Now they're doing great with Switch. I'm so happy with what they're doing with Switch. Don't go back. But No, don't go, don't go do that again. Yeah, don't do that again. That was great when you did it-ish. Uh, it was great for you. It was great <laughs> for the world, I think. But uh, yeah, no, we're, we're happy where we are. I think this in television branding, trying to make a new name for yourself and jump in to try to fill that category. I think that's what you do with this. And I think just capturing that spirit of simple games like Atari and television games, I think that's wonderful. I I agree. It's one of the things that, you know, like we knock it. Um, now it certainly doesn't get the, the, the love that maybe it deserves or whatever, but um, you know, stuff like Angry Birds. Mm-hmm. Like the, those games were as popular as they were because they were they were good first of all, but they were simple. Yeah, they're the like, kinds of things that anyone can pick up and play. And it's, yeah, like I get this; it's intuitive, it's convenient. I don't have to spend six hours before I even start the main part of my game. I just, I am just playing a video game. I just want to kill some fucking time. And, yeah, I mean, and that, here I am. You can say what you will about something like Mario Odyssey being for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's not it's for no gamers. It's a mm-hmm. video gamey. It's a video gamey ass video game right there. Mm-hmm. There's you know brief cutscenes and tutorials and moving around in a 3D space. And we've talked. We were just talking about it recently. Like I still love playing combat. Get me with one other person who knows how to play the game, and I'll play combat on 2600 like it's till, till the end of days. Like right. Those games are fun, but it's that kind of yeah, that kind of sitting around the TV and playing them together kind of a thing that's is what's kind of missing. There's some of that stuff gets thrown into like the eShop with the Switch or the PS4 or whatever, but even those kinds of games you still have to have a, you, you have to hold that controller, you know? You have to hold that thing with all these buttons on it that's uh that's that's that high bar- barrier of entry. And uh, that's why the Wii was so successful is you'd look at that remote and you immediately got it. It was that simple. That was Wii Sports Tennis right there. It was that simple. And I like that that's what they're going after with this in television. Bully for them. Bully for them indeed. All right. Um, quickly, because uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Quickly, what have you been playing? 
Um, not much. More Owlboy. Um, it is, it is very good. I like it. Uh, I like it quite a bit. The the puzzles are getting more interesting. Um, I've been able to pick up more than one um, companion. I guess is what we'll call them, for lack of a better term. But um, the story is very cool. Uh, the graphics are are, are just gorgeous. Um, I am I am digging it quite a bit. Excellent. And I just bought today because it was on sale for ten bucks. I bought a bridge constructor portal. Yes. I have not started it, but um, it's I'm fantastic. Very, I'm very excited, and well, you should be. Ah, uh, well, I guess real quick, I've played a little bit more Blossom Tales, uh, just just a tiny bit more. It's still great, um, but it's contending. It has to contend with Runner Three and Legacy Collections, right? So uh, I haven't put a lot of time into it. I have been really enjoying Runner Three. I've found that as long as I stick to the uh, the gold path. And uh, not trying to do the gem run, just stick with the gold runs and uh, regular stages. The game's really gets just right what I want. It's there's been a couple of cheap deaths, but they're surrounded by really cool set pieces. Like I'm doing this stage in the uh, the, the spooky land, and mm-hmm. there's this kraken in the background, and then all of a sudden he whips out a tentacle and breaks the path right in front of me. And it was just so cool. I didn't care that I died. I was just like, oh, that was awesome. It scared the crap out of me. That was great. And then I knew where it was the next time I went there. And it was nice and right. easy to get past. So I was, I, I'm, I'm having a really good time with it. Um, I did try to play through the first bonus level now that I've gotten the, um, the double jump. And uh, I made it all the way to the end. After, or So it counts every time you die. Every time you mm-hmm. uh, lose, it puts the, flashes the number of deaths across the screen. Once you get to 100, it just is like the Kubert curse word thing. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Because I died over 100 times trying to get to the end of this stage. <laughs> and you know this because... Because it keeps count. I don't know how many times I died past that, but I eventually got to what I think is the end of the stage. Uh, and it's a, a handful of steps that are too far for you to double jump over. There are maybe like two to three pixels worth of space on each one of these steps that's safe for you to land on so what you need to do is double jump and land flawlessly on one of these spots and then with enough space that you could double jump past the last ones and then i would hope that that's the end of the level but i'm never going to find out because that is not fun (laughs) (laughs) it's not fun it's not possible i mean it's not possible for you no Um, i I could get lucky sometime. I have gotten lucky doing one or two of those jumps in the stage before. You do um, have two children. Yeah, and and not that I don't love playing this game, and the music is great. It's It's got a lot going for it, and I think these bonus levels are really cool looking, but if they're all as hard as this one, I will never see all of this game, and right. that's kind of disappointing, because that's that right shame. there, that's just mean. <laughs> and I'm not yeah. talking like Mega Man style mean. That's like, it's not it's not a matter of skill anymore at that point. It's a matter of having just the unbelievable pixel, perfect rhythmic timing to do that. And it's such a minuscule margin for error that it's like, that just, that's just crappy design. Yeah. That's not just, that's not fun. That's not a matter of like, cause there's a lot of crazy things in that level. And I loved doing all those hundred runs, as frustrating as it was, when I finally got past it and got to those steps, the things that I was able to do in that stage, I felt like a freaking ninja doing them. They were so <laughs> much fun, jumping and weaving in between all these different things and grabbing the gems and the gold. It felt really cool, and I could see myself going through a bunch of levels like that. But once it got to that bit, and I know I wasn't alone, too, because uh, Guillaume Vayette from the Nintendo World Report podcast, he posted on Twitter that he was he got to the same spot, and he said, that's it. I'm not doing this. I'm not playing this stage. And I get it because I feel the same way. I'm not going to even try to beat that ever again. I have no interest in it because that last step thing is stupid. <laughs> it's just stupid. No. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like, um, do you ever play the impossible game? A little bit. Yeah. It's, it's very similar, similar to Runner. Yeah. yeah. That's not, and that, that game's not fun after a <laughs> while. Yeah. It gets, it stops being fun. And that's what Runner 2 never did. Never Runner 2 never stopped being fun. And I'm finding that the regular levels in this game are always fun. Uh, it's this, this, these side level things that look super cool that kind of bum me out. But Well, and what's nice about it, though, is, and 
who knows if this is something that they'll do or that they're interested in, but with, uh, with the advent of digital gaming, that is something that can be patched. There is, you know, there is a possible workaround of like, man, like people really hate this. We fucked up. Let's fix it. Yeah. Cause runner three is eventually going to come to other platforms. And something tells me that when it does, there might be some tweaks because they've gotten a lot of negative feedback about this game, which was really disappointing right before it came out. The reviews were, I mean, I think somebody, somebody from Game Explained uh, or, or Nintendo or Reports, one of those places I follow was like, Runner 3 is the biggest disappointment of the year. Yeah, it's what you were saying last yeah. week. And, and, and it, for a company the size of them, they cannot afford that. Yeah, that was some pretty negative word of mouth. It seems to have turned around. I think the game's doing well for them. I haven't checked the the Switch's um, bestsellers lately, but it does seem to be doing well enough. I hear people talking about it and people, you know, lavishing some love on them for their game. But it is definitely, it definitely crosses that line into too hard, as in like just stopped being fun hard. Yeah, and uh, that sucks. It does suck, but man, when it shines, it really shines. Uh, so I still definitely recommend giving it a try. Uh, I picked up both Mega Man Legacy collections. I did the first six Mega Man games in the first six days. <laughs> I beat one through six, uh, one a day every uh, the first six days of it being out. So That's that pretty felt pretty awesome. good. Uh, seven, I decided to calm down because seven's one of my favorites in the series. I love mm-hmm. the way that game looks and sounds, and I love the level designs, uh, the the branching paths and whatnot. I love seven so much, and it's been so long since I played it. Uh, that I really stopped to take my time on this one because these these legacy collections are so well done, and um, yeah, I, I just finished all eight of the the main robot masters. I wanted to stop and play Turbo Man with my son because uh, Turbo Man's the one who you know transforms into a car, and his whole level is themed around like trucks and stuff. So John thought that was super cool. And then they made that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie about it. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. No. No. I'm sorry. I got you nothing. Don't... You've never seen the movie? Jingle I'm... All the Way? Is that what that is? Yeah. Where he's Turbo Man. It's, oh it's, my god, Turbo Man. That's where I, all right. It's yeah. possibly the greatest Christmas movie yeah. ever made. I remember that. Arnold okay. Schwarzenegger and Sinbad and Phil Hartman. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Fucking love that movie so much. Anyway. Um, anyway. Now, the bigger question, Chris, before we jump into our E3 thing. Mm-hmm. Are you going to get the Street Fighter collection, and on which system? Because now well, that's, that's the thing funny. I have to ask you. That is the thing you have to ask me. So let's let's tell that story. Uh, I am sitting next to a PlayStation Four. I am now the proud owner of a PlayStation Four. It showed up in the mail today. The hugest of all conceivable shoutouts to a gentleman by the name of Clay Cook. Clay Cook contacted. He's a listener of our show. Uh, this is this is something that I've never expected to happen in my life. Uh, Clay Cook has been listening to our show since episode twenty, and he sent me a Twitter message that just said, uh, "I I might be able to help you out with something." Private message me. So I was like, "All right." I did some quick internet stalking because I recognized the name, and I was like, "Oh, this guy." I talked to him about um, Breath of the Wild and stuff um, not that long ago. You know, back when that came out, and we were talking about the game. That was fun. Okay, I'll bite. What can you help me out with? Turns out that he had this issue with his PlayStation Four, and um, he decided to just upgrade and get himself a PS4 Pro, and he wanted to donate his old PS4. You know, as long as he could get it working right and, you know, erase all the information off it, set reset it to his factory d- defaults, uh, he wanted to donate, donate it to me since he's heard me talk about the fact that I don't have a PS4 and I'm not going to get one anytime soon. And uh, uh, so I, after asking him several times if he was sure and being as uh, thankful as humanly possible as I could on, like, a Twitter conversation... Uh, I agreed, and he sent me a PlayStation 4. It showed up in the mail today. Uh, I can't play it yet, <laughs> because um, he uh, it, right after he put it in the mail, he realized that the power cord was still in his car. <laughs> <laughs> so he's mailed that separately. That should be coming in a couple of days. Uh, the system does not have a controller, which I just, I just ordered one of them off of Amazon. 
uh, should be a it's, standard. It's USB-C honestly thing, so. the least you could do. Seriously, um, <laughs> that's which like yeah, that is a, the least you could do. That's about the most affordable way to get me a PlayStation Four. So Clay Cook, from the bottom of my heart, um, just holy crap! Thank you. Um, I yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, we don't do this to get free stuff. <laughs> And, I do. Uh, it just never works. I, <laughs> and like, it was it was really something when Ferg sent me that Zelda watch. You know, and I was talking about I have all the Zelda games except for the the Zelda watch, and then he sent me that. But you know, Ferg and I were friends at this point. You know, like, right? I know right. him, and and <clears throat> we're 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 friends, and I appreciated that to to no end. But it was like, it, it didn't strike me as so out of the blue, and this is just this guy who listens to us talk every week and which is is great i mean that is that's the kind of thing that like we'll keep doing this show just for clay i seriously yeah and and now i'm going to play playstation 4 games the problem is i own one playstation 4 game and that playstation 4 game is bubsy so unfortunately that's gonna be when that this all these parts get here that's gonna be the first game i play on my ps4 which is, is not the game you should judge it by i definitely won't be uh because i've played ps4 i know not to judge it by that but uh <laughs> that will be the first game i play because um uh, the first game that I we me and Dan and a bunch of people talked about uh, which games I should get and in what order and I have definitely decided. I mean, the game that I am most interested in is Horizon, so that's going to be the first game I play after Bubsy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so I, ridiculous. It is absolutely but, ridiculous. But I paid almost nothing for it. But um, important question, Chris. Bro, Will bro, you be getting before, before the important Fire. question? One more time, Clay. Thank you. That was. I was moved beyond reason by this incredible act of kindness. I cannot believe somebody gave me a PlayStation 4, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yes. Street Fighter. You kind of have to get it on PS4, I think. (sighs) All right, so the the, the part of me that considers money no object... (laughs) which is right. the part of me that lives in the clouds, is saying get it for both. No. Because here's the thing. That's ridiculous. This game is not going to run better on the PlayStation 4 than it is on the Switch. It's, That's not I, true. It, how do you mean? It's, it, it's arcade ports. It runs fine. I was re- watching reviews today. Sure. It's, it's great. There's online connectivity... I'll probably be able to know more people with this collection on PlayStation 4 that'll play online with me. There you go. I think. Because I also have a bunch of friends that have Switches now that might get this on that. Now here's... All right, here's the big things. The b- Playing people online, that's one thing. I know that I won't do that as often as I did back on Xbox 360 with Super Street Fighter 4. I just know I won't because I don't have that, that time to... Co- right. you know coordinate with other people to play it online so what it comes down to is not performance the games run the same on all platforms because they're old arcade games being emulated that's not an issue the switch has the portability factor the switch has no matter where i go if i have my switch with me i can play third strike i can play street fighter without whipping out my cell phone and playing that street fighter 4 version which isn't terrible but i can have good and proper the realest of the real street fighters with me wherever i go that's awesome that is awesome but the controller is something of an issue Mm -hmm. now i the reviews that i listened to today uh, again i'm going to mention ash paulson from uh game explain because i feel like he and i see eye to eye on a lot of things it's like he, he tends to share my opinions on a lot of stuff he said that if we're going like serious tournament worthy play you have to get an arcade stick for the switch which those exist and that's fine but for the level of play that i think i'm at it works pretty well with what it is Mm -hmm. i've gotten pretty good with those weird little buttons i would been the 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 fake d-pad i've been playing the Mega Man games with those and that's actually been working pretty well for me um so 
But that's not pulling off quarter circles and, you know. No, I it's not. I worry about that. Bit. I do worry about that. <clears throat> I am interested in it. Um, sure. Because I got to say, having those games portably on the Switch is really, really enticing to me to just... You know, instead of firing up a game game, it's another thing that I can just play a quick match or two and then just be done. Right. And that's really, really interesting to me. Now, on the opposite side, the PlayStation 4 will have a proper functioning D-pad mm -hmm. on that controller. A really nice one. Yeah. A really nice one. And probably more of an, of an online community that I could get involved with. And it comes with the free download of super street fighter four right i really don't know um because on one hand that is going to be tethered to the tv in my basement so i'm I mean, it's get the extra version of street fighter uh and online play or get the freedom to take it with me anywhere i really <clears throat> don't know that is a tough call for me i would say because if we're being honest you are going to end up with both Probably at some point, because it's would, probably going to go on sale and switch it's, uh, on, on PS4 at some point. Right. I would argue that the PS4 one would be the one to get first, um, mostly because of the online community and the fact that it is going to be uh, bigger at the beginning and will probably have a more sustained. Um, install base for it not that it's it it's not going to sell well on the switch but i can i i and i could be way off i would just i would imagine the community that that aspect of the game being a bigger part of the playstation 4 um going forward and i every 90 percent of me agrees with you except for the fact that there's apparently an active community around that street fighter 2 port they put on the thing early in its lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's going to be enough, there's going to be an active enough community there. But then I think back to, all right, well, you know what? This came out today and so did Ikaruga. And mm -hmm. I'm still, I still have the rest of seven and then all of eight, nine and 10 and Mega Man to do and all of runner three. Uh, well, most of runner three, I'm still working on blossom tales. I got to play me some Bubsy. I'm getting horizon sometime soon. Do I even have time for this? I, the Mega Man I, X collection is right around the corner, Dan. That's eight more games. I'm just saying, how are we going to stream you and I playing S street fighter? If I have it on PS4 and you have it on Switch. So basically, you're asking because you want to play Street Fighter with me. That's true. All yes. right. See, now th that's, that's, a, that's a factor. <laughs> because I will not be getting it on, um, on the Switch. I, yeah, no, because that makes I, I do all get sense all of the you. other things, but not having a pro controller um, to oh, play it on yeah. the TV, like that, that is a deal breaker. That me. I would, yeah, definitely. Because that game then becomes, you know, $110 for me to play it on the Switch. You just need to get a pro controller at some point. I, at so, and at some point I will. Um, you know, or it, if not a pro controller, one of the, the tethered ones, they have a long enough cord and they're like 25 bucks. Oh, yeah, those, you things. know what I mean? I hear like those that, are quite nice. But but even still, that jacks the price of this forty dollar game up to you know sixty five at that, that point. That and, is and true. Just not something I am in a position to do at the moment. You know what I mean? Not that it's a crazy amount of money, but you know, I, it, when I look at it, of I could spend forty, or I could spend sixty five to get the same thing. I'm going to spend forty. <laughs> is Plus it forty? Super is it forty Street Fighter dollars? 4. Yeah, it's is 40. that how much it is? Yeah, I was just looking at it on the uh, on the store when I was downloading Portal and deciding whether or not I needed to get both. But I I didn't get it yet. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm Tiff's still... birthday is coming up. Um, I'm still playing through Owlboy. I want to get um, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Oh my god, I want to get that too. You know what I mean? That's only ten bucks, so I want to grab that. You know, there's there's a few other things to get, and the the cool thing about Street Fighter is that I do want to get it, you know, um, I would imagine that Dean is going to get it, we can do some streaming stuff with it, I can play against you, but it's not like I need to have it today. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not like I had to get that Mega Man collection. This one, sure. I'm not dying to play Street Fighter right now because I'm so busy with other stuff. Right. But I really want this collection. I really do. That I was looking at a video of some of the um the like the museum style stuff. Ugh. Looks yeah, so I'm good. I'm super into that. I'm I'm really into the the online versions of the games. Like that's that's just really awesome. I didn't even get Tropical Freeze yet. Son of a no. bitch. <laughs> you know, there's too much. Too much. Chris. Yeah, it's very strange being in this situation where there's and just too many good games. Ready? Are you ready for this, Chris? I'm ready. And steering us back to our feature topic tonight, E3 is right around the corner, and we're going to get a whole slew of announcements of new stuff that we want. I know. It's ridiculous. It's ridic. So, uh, before we get to the next week's True Fun, which is the uh, Ridiculous Predictions episode, which I always love doing, we are going to talk about some of our favorite E3 moments. Um, I didn't rank these, except I saved my, I knew what my top two were, so I just saved them for last. Uh, so I don't know. How many do you have? I have five. Oh, wow. I have a lot more than that. You do. <laughs> I, I do. Uh, so let's just, let's just plow through a few. Uh, I'll okay. start. Um, I don't know if this was one of yours, uh, but this is a pretty great moment. Um, this was from the PlayStation three conference and back in 2010, Mm -hmm. and this was uh one of those sony dudes i don't even remember who it was they're just up there talking doing their thing get ready to make an announcement and then all of a sudden gladys's voice comes in oh and it's so good freaking gabe newell walks out on stage and he like he completely owns the fact that he had been trashing the playstation 3 Oh yeah, he uh, even he he says something like, you know, thank you for not like beating the shit out of me. Yeah, something yeah, something like not the punching me in me. the face. Yeah, uh, because like he was pretty vehemently against like the PlayStation Three. I'm I'm pretty sure that a lot of that came from the performance of Orange Box on PS3 mm -hmm, and whatnot. Was, mm -hmm. But it was just really cool. Uh, you know, one anything that incorporates Gladys is usually pretty cool. Uh, and two, it was just one of those. I love it when they when you see someone on stage at a press conference that you just never expected to see there. And that was one of those things that I just never expected to happen. It was a super cool moment. And it it's going to be so much cooler the next time he comes out and announces half Portal 3. That yes. is going to be just out of control. Absolutely. Um, well the other the other piece of that was yeah. that it was then immediately followed by that amazing trailer for Portal 2. Yes. Which I did I was doing some research on this earlier today and watching a lot of these moments again. And I haven't seen that trailer in forever. And wow man, it's that so game good. still looks so good. It really it does. Still it looks so really, good. really held up. Oh my God. It's pretty crazy like how well that game holds up. Portal is amazing. It really is. Um, I'm going to stick in 2010, um, and I'm going to highlight, also at the PlayStation 3 conference, the Kevin Butler segment. Now, <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Butler, I know, I get it. It's cheesy, it's silly, it's no cheesier than Reggie, though. No, um, it's, it's not the cheese factor, it was, it's the content. I thought about this one, and I, wa I rewatched that whole thing today. Because this was on my list until I rewatched it. But but here's the thing. It's not my favorite moments viewed through, you know, the glasses of hindsight and adjusted for, you know, modern expectations. It was mm -hmm. what was the moment at that time. And yeah. back then, for people unfamiliar, um, Kevin Butler was this character that Sony Marketing had created. Um, who was the VP of everything. Like, he would pop out on these commercials, and he would say ridiculously funny shit, and he was, like, the VP of fanboyism and the VP of you know, whatever silly thing you could imagine. Like ridiculous explosions or something like that. Yeah. He was yeah. a great... I, I was... Oh, I was phenomenal. The, I can't... I still can't think of a reason they're not still using him. Like... Uh, th there was some sort of controversial thing he did or said. He was in an ad for, like, a Nintendo oh. game or something like that. Or an Xbox game, like he was just like in a commercial, gotcha. and it was like, oh shit, that's the VP. Of so like, we can't do that. That's not. And it was just, and that was the end of it. It killed it. But, that's such a shame. Those are such good ads. But and that was, guy was awesome. Oh, he was so funny, and it was it was so popular 
at the time that people were naturally asking, you know, are you going to be at E3? And he was, you know, like the, the actor had said, you know, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. I have other uh, filming commitments. You know, I'm not going to be able to be there. And then out walks Kevin Butler out onto the stage and he delivers this really impassioned speech about gaming and shit for gamers and just he introduced the PlayStation Move which was awesome at the time and kind of fucking fell apart but whatever it's still being used for the VR and it's really great now but at the time it was this really amazing moment and it was so, he was funny you know he was and, not only was he funny but like it was so obvious that this guy was good at talking, whereas all the Sony executives were not. Oh, so bad. Because coming they off of so that bad. guy that he interrupted, it's just like, okay, have this guy do the rest of your conference because he can talk. Yeah, and, and like he was well, talking with passion. I, I I get what you're saying. It was, but I also remember kind of feeling that way at the time because you know this was we need to we need to get some of the Wii's success. This was that with, with sure. them and with uh with with the the move and with Connect. And I was always a little bit uh just kind of you know a little turned off by that and just the way that he just dove right into like all right, and I'm the gamer's gamer and you're going to love the PlayStation Move. You're really going to love it. It's going to work for all your cool games and stuff. And I I liked what he was saying about the oh, the inclusion thing. Like it only does mm-hmm. everything and we want yeah the you know those grandmas and whatnot to be playing it too but that was such a very specific like he was just straight up saying we want to do what we is doing yeah and that was a a portion of game history that i didn't love was that nintendo carved out this their own little unique thing and them trying to copycat it was just upsetting because i get that there was a lot of money there potentially but Sony was doing so good at their thing. Yeah. Nintendo wasn't at that point. Nintendo needed to do something different because Sony was beating them at that thing that they were doing. And then Nintendo starts making all this money with this crowd that's not going to stick around. And Microsoft and Sony were like, we need that money too. We want some of that money as well. There's more money. We want more money. Just do what you do. Do what give, you do and do it well. Which is what they're doing with PlayStation money. 4. Like, yeah. They righted that ship. But this this time was just so weird. And that chunk of the speech didn't thrill me. But I do get where you're coming from. That was a great, great moment having him come out. It was such a fun reveal. And it was such a fun character. It was. You know, I, I loved it. Agreed. Uh, this is... This one is... Uh, it's low on my list. But it is... One of the most memorable things I've ever seen, because this is this is an example of something that's so well put together that it transcends my distaste for the subject matter. <laughs> OK, I I'm do excited. not care for Halo. No, but the Halo three reveal trailer at E3 2006 is incredible. Excellent. It is an exquisite trailer. It shows no gameplay. And it's just so well put together, and especially that music. I watched it again today, and it still gave me chills. I do not give a crap about Halo, not a single one. But I will watch this trailer and just, oh my god, the music and the way it looks, and it's just great. And like Captain Generic, Master Chief, walks out, and I'm like... That's badass. I don't care. That is wonderful. It's just so well put together. It is such a great trailer. And that was just the power of something that's that, that well put together that it makes it exciting. <laughs> it just makes so much even something that I don't care about that much more exciting. And that that was that's why that's just such a such a high bar for me. Like I don't have a ton of top Microsoft moments at E3. Mm-hmm. I just don't. Um a lot of times their their stuff just doesn't connect with me. But that Halo 3 reveal trailer was insane. Uh, Microsoft Connect. Um, I will stick with Microsoft for the next one, because I wrote down five, but I do I did have others. Um, that It's the car from last year, right? Yeah. Oh, God, Look at that car! God. There's a car! <laughs> There's a car! Ever awesome. seen a car before? It's a car! This car, this car, this fucking car, this car <laughs> is in the game. It's in the game. This car 
this car that's on our stage that we spent a lot of money for, so we got to keep looking at it. It's also we in the game. We drove fuck it that ourselves. game because there's a car on this stage. Um, <laughs> the, the the Minecraft, the virtual 3D Minecraft oh, wow. thing that they showed off. That was mind blowing. That was I mean, the that future. Was so cool. Uh, yeah, so, that was and, and it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> It's not gonna happen. And it's never gonna happen. <laughs> but man, was that a cool moment. That was so crazy. I remember looking at that being like, that is a neat trick. <laughs> it, Completely it didn't make me want to play it. Applicable it, to anything, but it is a fucking cool trick. That was a neat trick right there. You're absolutely right. That was a cool moment right there. Man, like, I was watching that going, son of a bitch. <laughs> That's awesome. We are almost on the holodeck here. We folks. really are. That's at this crazy. Point. I'm going to be able to wear a shitty jumpsuit and talk to Whoopi and drink something green. It's going to be fucking dope. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was great. Oh, that was, was so cool. It was cool. just so cool. And like to take Minecraft, this this world renowned, world beloved franchise and when you think that you have seen everything Minecraft can do and present it in this new light where Minecraft, this pixelated shit, looks like the fucking future. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, just what a great moment. And they have done nothing to capitalize on it. <laughs> They've done exactly whatsoever. Jack. Jack and shit. And Jack left I'm, town. I'm with you, man. Like, most of the Microsoft stuff like most of their stuff at their conferences i'm like eh? oh man that's the i gotta mention this one you just reminded me of a, of a moment at a microsoft conference that got me freaking killer instinct mm, that I was didn't like, care. i it was like, it, yeah. not even when the game not even when they showed the game because that's when it all deflated for me but it was when it when they first started announcing it when just that music, the did it, did it, did it, did it, and like that little logo and things just started showing up. I was like, oh, they're bringing Killer Instinct back. Oh, this is going to be, ooh. Ugh, tribal it's still tattoos? made by Rare, and that's not good anymore Real shit. Cute, really. But that mm. moment right there when they first kind of yanked that out, that was really freaking cool, man. That that eight seconds was yeah. an amazing that eight seconds. That was a seconds. great eight seconds, man. That made me also really happy. Also a really good Luke Perry movie. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a horrible Luke Perry. All right. Uh, these are definitely not ranked because this is one of my favorite things. This was an onslaught. All right. So mm -hmm. me, Super Nintendo fan, love Nintendo to every end of the earth. Right. They've been. I've, uh, I've heard rumors that they, <laughs> they've been smacked around a little bit at this point. Um, they launched the GameCube and I love it with with uh, all of my heart and soul. But uh, it has not been catching up to the Xbox and the PlayStation. Uh, it's been catching up to the Xbox, but the PlayStation, PlayStation Two is a it's it's, a, it's far away, right? Yeah. So I'm enjoying my GameCube. Uh, we had we had Metroid Prime come out, mm -hmm. uh, Wind Waker, and uh, uh, Mario Sunshine. Things are going things are going well. We've started to have a bit of an uptick in the uh, the old the old GameCube, and. What they needed to do at E3 2004 was just come out swinging and knock it out of the goddamn park. That's what they needed to do, because everybody else had some crazy stuff going on, too. And Nintendo did exactly what they needed to do. Things after that kind of fell apart again. But E3 2004 starts off with this crazy awesome compilation trailer of a whole bunch of really awesome game footage with you know, games like Bat and Kados in it, and it ends with the uh, the the phrase which I I, the, the, I can't believe they they haven't used this slogan again that we make games that make games worth playing. That's a mm -hmm. good slogan right there. It's pretty good. Then on as soon as that finishes, Reggie Fizeme walks on stage for the first time. And he does the whole, I'm, my name is Reggie, I'm about kicking I'm about ass and taking names, and... and we're about making great games. And that's it. Boom. Right into Metroid Prime 2. Jaws on the floor. Ah, this game looks amazing. Dark Samus. Oh my god, things are blowing up. This looks... She's doing the screw attack. The screw attack is back in Metroid Prime. I'm ripping my hair out. Freaking the hell out. This is amazing. Followed immediately by Star Fox Assault. 
Say what you will about that game. It looked really cool. It and did that was look cool. Namco for the the team that brought you freaking Ace Combat made a made a Star Fox game. Enjoy. That's Should amazing news the right there. Should have yeah. been better. Still can't believe it wasn't. Follow that by Resident Evil Goddamn Four. Yeah, I know you're not the biggest fan of that, but I'm that not. initial reveal trailer looked leagues ahead of anything any platform had done. Just the visuals in that game alone were incredible. And Resident Evil 4 turned out to be one of my all-time favorite action games. But at that point, it was a GameCube exclusive. That's right. He would cut off his head if it showed up on any other platforms. That's that, that's quite a story. But and he's at dead the now. time. <laughs> Which is a shame. Because he shame. was fun. He's a talented man. So at the time. <laughs> a talented man. Just had. Where only a couple of minutes into Nintendo's press conference, we've been introduced to Reggie, uh, this huge personality. We've gotten three new exclusive GameCube games, Metroid, Star Fox, and Resident Evil. Uh, and then he comes out and he talks... The, Reggie comes back out and he just talks extremely frankly about what Nintendo's mission is. Like, these games look awesome, but we're not just here for you. We're here for everyone, and we're going to make games that appeal to all gamers. And, like, he was so just dead serious about it. Didn't try to make a, a joke out of it or anything like that. He was just like, we are in this for all of you and all of you that aren't here. So we're going to keep making the Mario games and all that stuff. But... We're also going to make these awesome games. And they went on to have a pretty damn good conference where they introduced the DS and all that jazz. Um, yeah, the DS reveal was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. But this Was that opening... the one with all of the girls walking out and they had the DSs like... That was 3DS. Or the 3DS when yeah. they were like chained to their bodies. Yeah, because that they didn't want so any of those weird. things leaving. But they were like, we can't show you a video of this. You have to see this to believe it. Yeah. And that probably would have been one of my favorite moments had I been there because watching that online didn't really do anything for me. Like it's glasses free 3D and it actually works. I'm like, bull fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. No way it does. It kind of does. Freaked me out, but they there you go. But that whole bit right there, that just opening segment of Nintendo's E3 2004 was like, as Nintendo fan, was about as good as I could have possibly imagined it being. Now, we all know how E3 2004 ended for them, which we will get to later, but um, (laughs) that right there, Resident Evil 4, Star Fox, and Metroid Prime, I could not have been a happier person, and I was just losing my damn mind at that conference at that point. Losing my mind. I'm going to stick with n- Nintendo and talk about the uh, the 2014 Robot Chicken Conference. Oh my god, I forgot about that! <laughs> When's Mother am... 3 coming out? <laughs> my god, I forgot that was so good! <laughs> Adult Link yelling at Toon Link, like everything about Holy it. Holy crap, how was... did I forget about that? I knew there was a Nintendo Direct recently that I loved. That was such a good show, you're right! It Holy was, crap, what games were in that? That was 2014? Yeah. It, it, was, it was about the best Nintendo could do at that point. Oh my god, that because, was... Because, the... I mean, you were talking about the hype of, like, just, you know, PlayStation 4 was out. You know, the year before was the big PlayStation reveal, but, like, PlayStation 4 was just off the charts, everybody was loving it, you know, it's this brand new hot system, and Nintendo's like, ooh, Robot Chicken? Let's robot do Chicken. That. This Let's was Smash Brothers. This was that ridiculous Smash Brothers trailer where Satoru Iwata and Reggie beat the crap out of each that's, other. Yep, that was oh in there. Oh my god, that was so good, and that's when we saw that the Miis were going to be in there. That's right, I I put this whole, the, the Smash Brothers thing in as one of my favorites i just totally forgot it was connected to this mm-hmm. oh my god this was so good because you know excellent. piggybacking off of this you know was when we also not only just that reveal but at e3 this year as well at e3 2014 we saw i, I believe it was 2014 where we saw um Mega Man was in this yes i believe so was it that or let me check my notes i'm was pretty that sure at 13 was. nope that was the year before was it I think it's. I have it written down. The the Mega Man reveal was in 2013. I thought it was 14. Whatever. 
it was still a good moment. It was it was this wonderful blending of worlds of Robot Chicken, which is endlessly funny. Yoshi's and... Woolly World, Captain Toad, Breath of the Wild reveal. Holy crap, that's right. This was when we first saw Breath of the Wild in motion, and we saw Link on the horse, and then he fights that guardian. Oh my god, that was amazing. I must have watched that a billion times. And they went into Pokemon, and yeah, Yoshi's Woolly World, and Hyrule Warriors... Uh, the Kirby game, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Oh, was this Mario Maker? Holy crap, this was Mario Maker 2. What a year! Yeah, it wasn't bad. This is Mario Maker? This was Splatoon? Jeez. Not bad. Yeah, they... It's years like this that really make you think, like, man, if they just had a handful of years that were this good, the Wii U probably would have done okay. It really would have. But No. Was it at the Treehouse Live? When did oh they finished it off showing Palutena? Yeah, the, if they finished off with Palutena, we knew about Mega Man at this point. We had mm. to. So yeah, I think the Mega Man reveal was at was at 2013, and had it must have been. Perhaps I mean it all runs together at this point, but you know, I just remember the robot chicken thing and and being delightfully amused by it. Yeah. No, that was that was awesome. That all those robot chicken segments. I loved the one where he like blew up the guy that was asking about Mother Three. That <laughs> was hilarious. Come on, Reggie, give us Mother Three. How about this instead? Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, robot chicken and Reggie sad at the is, same time. <laughs> pretty great. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Wait, uh, good, good pull. Good pull. I can't believe I forgot about that. I can't believe you forgot about that either. Like, I was expecting to say Robot Chicken Nintendo and to just not talk for 20 minutes. I've, I, was, I was going through so many weird E3 moments today. Like, That's fair. I watched a lot of the first E3, and it was weird. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. <laughs> we'll get back to that. As uh, bad as some of the other ones have been, you go back to that first one, and it's like... Oh, it's God. it's amazing. Nintendo spent like their entire press conference barely had any product in it. It was all about anti piracy. It's yeah. like this is what we need to do to crack down on piracy. It's just pie charts and just graphs. And, <laughs> wow. Weird. All right. One of my favorite moments. There were a lot of great moments in uh E3 2013. Mm-hmm. But uh there was nothing quite like watching the Microsoft. 2013 conference where they reveal the xbox one fully and they talk about all their the things that they're going to do and the the drm and not being able to really use used games and stuff like that yeah and then listening to the world just kind of be like wow what a bunch of assholes that's pretty terrible <laughs> and then the next day at playstation's the conference, very next day the very next day playstation just starts smacking them around, just directly attacks them at their conference about, you can use used games on our system. If you want to lend your game to a friend, you here's can. Here's how you do it. And they, that little promo video of oh, Shuhei just <laughs> handing, handing the, the game, game over. Oh my god, no, you don't have to check in move. for any persistent online DRM. They were so snarky. And like, I, I love it when the industry kind of works well together you know when it's friendly competition but if anyone deserved to have the piss taken out of them it was microsoft in 2013 it really was because that was a bunch of horse shit and then they just then the price just that i that that final nail in the coffin right there and it was a hundred dollars cheaper the console generation war was over yeah playstation 4 has trounced xbox one there is no catching up at this point it's just not going to happen because the ps4 has no no signs of slowing down that was was, that was on my list as my um my number two really Um, i'm sorry i stole that it's no it's okay Uh, but it was also combined with the uh, with the PlayStation reveal in 1995, when the first PlayStation was coming out, and the head of Sony came out at that point, and you know they had a, a whole thing because the Saturn was announced that year of it's three hundred ninety nine dollars and you can get it right now and like See, nobody you're, you're, cared. You're dramatizing that. I watched that earlier today. It was the most boring thing ever. Well, it was it a was. dude in glasses just being like, and um, so so yesterday so we started rolling it. out our official uh, uh, Saturn launch and uh, it is available in stores right now. Uh, it's it's a it retails for about three ninety nine to four forty nine depending. 
and uh, you, it's it's available <sighs> now. Was it I, that bad? It was. Yeah, it was that bad. I, if I, I can know. grab I some audio it. and throw it into the show, I, I, I will. I will, Evan. Um, Evan at one o four forty six. I'm going to try to find something for you to splice into the show. And since I began my remarks with an announcement, I may as well finish with another. We started our rollout of Sega Saturn yesterday. We were at retail today with 1,800 Toys R Us, software, etc., and electronic boutique stores around the U.S. and Canada. Our retail price is between $399 and $449. We have 10 software titles at retail in the next few days, 20 by August. Our total rollout will take the summer to complete. But we're starting today in store and starting today on primetime TV with these commercials. Sega Saturn is not only here now, it's out there. Thanks. It's been an honor. But yeah, it was that bad. It was just completely effing boring. And now, now, but now, then- tell your story of the PlayStation conference immediately after. Sony dude comes out, comes out, they're like, he's going to have a brief press conference on the uh, <laughs> price of the PlayStation. And he comes didn't out even say the, price. They didn't even say price. It's just like, yeah, now, just a, now a word from uh, blah, blah, blah. From the president. And like, he comes out and he shuffles some papers around and he looks out at the crowd and says, two ninety nine. dollars And walks away. And walks away. <laughs> and that was the end of that generation. Uh, I'm going to ask... Sony Computer Entertainment President of America, Steve Reyes, to join me for a brief presentation. Two ninety nine. Sony won mm-hmm. that day by and being a hundred dollars cheaper, and that that was it. I mean, it was over. And like that was, but that that was what also cool about that was that was that was nail in the coffin right there because oh god, yeah. Saturn was all uh, they, they had a pretty decent showing of like how they were going to do their ad campaigns because you got to understand back in ninety five e three was very different. It was being it was them talking to shareholders and and people that want were to invest in this they weren't selling games directly to gamers at e3 right. at this point so um sega's press conference was you know they they spent a lot of time going over that what their ad campaign is and they showed what some of their commercials are going to look like um and all you know the, some of the games that were being made for it and how many third parties they had signed on all that kind of stuff so it wasn't a terrible presentation until they got to that bit where like it's available now and it's four hundred to four hundred and fifty dollars. Like that Which was steep. Even like that was that unexpectedly was crazy. steep. That was that was that was a lot of money. But PlayStation's conference, this was their first E three because it was the first E three, but this was their first, you know, big press conference as a competitor on this stage versus Sega and Nintendo at that point. And they they kind of nailed it. Like they had a lot of really cool looking stuff. They were not to sound like too much like an old guy. They were they had a very hip presentation, and it wasn't they did. as it was bland very cool. it as was Sega's. Different. Yeah, um, and the, the fact that they even came out with that joke of just saying two ninety nine and walking away. Like they presented it in a mu- in an amusing manner, and that was yeah, it was just great. It was it was just a really great moment. I wish I was. You know, I wish the internet existed back then, so I could have been cognizant of that kind of stuff, you know, because we read about it in magazines later. Right. Um, but now right. you can actually catch YouTube footage of it, and it is, it is dry. <laughs> it, it is dry is, stuff, yeah, but uh, it's, it's very boring, brown, but, but it's... Um, <laughs> it's where your brown look It's it's today. It's still really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, 1995. 95. But then, man, that, that 2013 PlayStation conference. Because that, <laughs> that was, the other thing about that was that for as as shitty as a lot of the Xbox stuff was, there was a lot of really cool stuff that they showed. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like, they showed some really cool, really new, interesting things. 
But then Sony came out and was like, here's why you don't care about any of that. And they, and they just destroyed it. Pretty much. I was so to much look so back that, at the, that um... dude went and like threw the Jesus. fucking mic, his mic drop, which was ridiculous. Do you remember like they interviewed him later and he like threw it over his shoulder? <laughs> I don't remember and that. And said mic drop. Like you're not allowed to say mic drop. That kind of ruins the whole <laughs> mic so let's drop. let's see. I'm looking at their, their 2013 press conference and what the hell is this they're starting with? Oh, is this? Oh, they started it with Phantom Pain. I was like, yeah, all right, Metal Gear Phantom Pain is going to be on Xbox, so that's kind of neat. Jeez, where did they go from there? Uh, well, but I'm not even just talking about that. I'm tanks. talking about some of the like the reveal stuff that they put out, like the way that you could hmm. control it and, you know, the, yeah, the that's different what voice just, command I'm, stuff. Like, all of that was pretty cool. I remember it not being a terrible E3. There was this, uh, what was the name of this stupid Spartan game that turned out to be trash? What was that? Oh, God. Oh, what is this? Rise of the Rise, asshole. yeah, yeah, right. boy, yeah that that didn't go anywhere. People no. hated that game because There's was it, it was Forza. like a connect only thing. No, I like think it was you... just crap. I don't think it was connect only. I think it was just garbage. Microsoft Studios presents what the hell is that? Project Spark? Did that ever happen? Yes, really. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that had like Conquer in it or something, right? Yeah. People dug oh, yeah. it too. There was actually some pretty cool stuff that was done with that, but totally forgot about that. Now they're talking yeah. about all the features of Xbox Live, and there's Dead Rising, Witcher Three, Battlefield Four, blah blah blah. Yeah, this wasn't a bad conference. It didn't really, it really speak wasn't. to me very much, but it was definitely not a bad conference. And there's Halo. Was it Halo Four? I think. Still not as cool as that Halo Three trailer, but that wasn't no. bad. But man, did they get killed the next night? Yeah, it was just like, this is cute. (laughs) Nicely done, guys. Here's how it's done. (laughs) That was Sony just firing on all cylinders. Yeah, and it wasn't even, and like, that was was a great moment, but like, their conference in total was just, it was just better. It was, (laughs) it just had, I mean, flowing through what we got here is like, yeah, they, they had the Vita going on and like, okay, whatever. Um, they were talking about the Batman stuff. I'm just rolling real quick. Redbox Destiny. video. Was this um, PlayStation TV and stuff they talked about? There's a little bit of Kingdom Hearts in there. Yeah, they just they just had it. They 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 just nailed it at this show. Good for them. Good stuff. Good stuff. All, All right, right, Chris. I'll, I'll say I one more before the break. One more in a break. Yeah. Um. The and then uh, we'll have our five minutes after the break, yeah. like usual. E3 2006. Um, if I remember correctly, because I'm all this kind of stuff was blocked at work, so I was messing around with it on my phone, uh, getting the research down. But it was E3 2006, and I think this was actually after their presentation. This like was at a private thing behind closed doors, and then it got kind of released to everybody. Was the Super Smash Brothers Brawl reveal? Mm-hmm. Smash Brothers Brawl for Wii. Uh, this was so huge for me personally. Because of Pit, right? Being the huge uh, super uh, um, uh, Kid Icarus fan that I am, first off, this trailer was hilarious just from the jump because it's this the the character models from Smash Brothers Melee running at each other of Mario, Link, um, Kirby, and Pikachu, and you know Mario. They do this little like wave of electricity thing where they update to the new character models and Mario suddenly has like you can see the stitches on his overalls and Link looks like uh the Link from Twilight Princess and he's all like hyper detailed and Pikachu's got more texture and then the same thing happens to Kirby and nothing happens to the character model at all. <laughs> and he just looks around kind of sad and confused. <laughs> that one was pretty great. And that then he, they great. they fire up the trailer and they'll fight one another and the music's incredible and then the 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 stages are going nuts. We get to see the smash ball for the first time and that's mm-hmm. super cool and then we start getting the character reveals the the halibird takes off in the background and freaking meta knight shows up and i'm like <gasps> meta knight that's so cool and then he's fighting everybody and then he blocks an arrow and there is this amazing reinvention of my favorite nintendo character pit wings spread firing arrows and i'm like oh <gasps> He's real. <laughs> He's real. He's actually. Oh, I'm. I'm freaking the hell out. 
And like then uh, Zero Suit Sham- Samus shows up, and that's awesome. And Wario shows up and makes a giant nuclear fart, and that's hilarious. And the trailer's over, and I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm sold. That's it. That's the best thing that's going to happen at E3. And then the codec. <laughs> and the freaking codec so sound happens. And I'm like, wait, what am I... What the hell am I looking at here? They're talking about Smash? There's no... No, no, that's not possible. There's Solid Snake in a freaking cardboard box with the Smash logo, and he comes out of the box, and he's face-to-face with Mario and Solid Snake are face-to-face, and Snake is in Smash Brothers. Bananas. (laughs) It is the level of insanity that I was never in a billion years prepared for, because up to this point, the first two Smash games were strictly nintendo franchises and the yeah, first third the party first character third to show party. up in smash isn't sonic the hedgehog no nope. isn't pac-man or mega man it's solid snake what M- makes all the sense in the world and like it's not that it does doesn't make sense there was an exclusive metal gear game on the freaking gamecube there the first metal gear game that came out in america was for the nintendo entertainment system like yeah. it makes sense snake you know the metal gear and nintendo have a history but boy that was just so unexpected and so cool it was very cool it was ridiculous it got me to consider playing smash i thought better of it yeah because that game is not for you but uh no, you probably no. watched some videos of it because that I was awesome did. Just like the Mega Man stuff. God, that was good. Good times. Right. Nothing Let's... like Smash hype. All right. We're going to take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of our some more of our favorite moments from E3 and maybe do a quick rundown of the our, our least favorite, but probably not because it's getting late. Right. Lightning You're listening... round, Chris. What's that? Lightning round? All right. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. Just because somebody is incredibly powerful, Chris, doesn't mean they're very bright. (laughs) I could read a lot into that sentence. You could, and probably should. It turns out to also be the case for Poor David Haller, who has once again been duped by Farouk into running head-on into a potentially apocalyptic situation. Will David's crappy impulse control and decision-making skills doom us all? Find out in Legion of Spoilers, Chapter 16. Still not watching that show. Probably still no. should be, though. Probably should. Love the first episode. Just yeah. you know, Time. Next, Rising from the Crypt took a little time off, but it's back now, and better than ever! Well, that's actually pretty much the same as it was before, because it's an article series about recapping Tales from the Crypt episodes. But, there was a new episode, so that is something. This month, Alex Azar recaps the classic tale of a jealous man in a cabin who drinks too much and kills his best friend with a crossbow. We've all been there, right? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Don't miss Rising from the Crypt. Three is a crowd. All's fair in love and war, Jimmy. Which is this, Dad? Both. <laughs> Finally, this week, the Mutant Musings podcast. Patty and Jonathan. Go to hell, Dad! <laughs> How about I meet you there? <laughs> I will often think of you when I am in less than... Patty and Jonathan discuss the ongoing hunt for Wolverine. The amount of children Logan has... And Legion's trippy introduction to comics via Bill Sienkiewicz's art. They also shed a tearful goodbye to all new Wolverine, but not Maria Hill, because no one, no one, Chris, likes Maria Hill. I mean, I like Colby Smulders. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like Maria Hill. Especially not comics, Maria Hill. No. What does Colossus and Shadow Cat's wedding have to do with Queen Elizabeth? Queen Elizabeth? What doesn't it have to do with her, quite honestly? <laughs> Could HIPAA laws stop Doctor Doom? Maybe. Find out on Mutant Musings, episode 24, Rescue Came. I was informed that that is a much dirtier title than any of us know. <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> you can catch all this great stuff with tons of other articles, videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. Okay, we are back, and better than ever. In front. <laughs> back in front. Uh, so, uh, I, I, do, how many more do you have, Dan? Do you have any more? Uh, just a couple. All right. You want to start, or you want me to kick it off? Uh, you go. Okay, uh, this was another game that turned out to not be so great, but the reveal of it was pretty amazing. So, uh, here we are, in E3 2009. The uh, Wii is still struggling to uh, capture the audience that Nintendo wants to capture in addition to their Blue Ocean strategy, as in gamers who continuously buy new games. And they went ahead and did something that was a really great idea that has been working out pretty well for them since, more or less, which was to farm out one of their more popular properties to a different developer. Uh, And they've had some success with this in the past. We mentioned Star Fox Assault before not being as good as it should have been, but it was Mm -hmm. a decent selling game. Like it did okay for itself. Uh, So they basically just used Reggie up there, you know, standing up on stage being like, all right, so we still want to capture this audience. We still want to make games for you. And so we teamed up with one of the, the most renowned action uh, studios out there. And uh, well, we made this. And it starts off, and it's all spacey and whatnot, and everyone's like, all right, what, what is this? Uh, all right, see, punch out s- in space. I don't get it, space, but I'm into yeah. it. We see the <laughs> Team Ninja logo, and like, oh, they partnered with Team Ninja. That's pretty cool. And then we see uh, so, some, some, some sci-fi-looking stuff and some, some girl giving a thumbs down, and, and then all of a sudden, there's Samus. And we're like, oh, my God, Team Ninja made a Metroid game. This looks great. And this it is going to be look the great. best thing ever. It looks great. The trailer is just like all these you know, Samus flipping around, doing all these awesome moves and just like jumping on things. And it looks like it's going to be this cool two and a half D game. Uh, it wasn't. It no. was a uh, pseudo 3D game that plays pretty well. Uh, it's marred horribly by its controller options, as mm-hmm. in there are no controller options. You have to play it with a D pad and buttons. Which is a terrible idea. It should naturally, naturally, uh, and really uh, just a putridly awful story and some nasty ass character assassination. But this trailer only showed the cool things in Metroid Other M, and that was awesome. It was such a cool moment to just be like, "All right, they haven't forgotten about us. Nintendo still wants to make cool ass games, and they clearly put a bunch of money into this because that was a bad ass trailer." It was very cool. It was, and I was pretty. Uh, did you for ever? It actually play this game because i know you had said at some point that you really didn't bother nope nope once uh once the reviews started coming out and uh the control scheme was uh was revealed i was like i'm not i'm not into it i still think you should give it a shot at some point just because i know you're a metroid fan and there's a lot of there's a lot of the actual game that this does right and it's such an interesting game because it is very much a Team Ninja Metroid game. And then it was like Sakamoto and Nintendo that did all the really crappy stuff, which is so weird. That because is weird. Because you'd think that the weird third party would have been doing all the like, holy crap, this is anime as hell and not good anime either. Um, that wasn't them. That was like yeah. Sakamoto's storytelling, which was just not good uh, in this no, game. That's, it was that's very strange. Really, really unhappy. But... When you're playing with just the, you know, running around and stuff, you know, just using the D-pad and a couple of buttons with the rear remote, rear remote held sideways, that's fine. There's very little in the way of, the only motion controls are some of the worst of it is when you have to point at the screen to look around in first person, which Ugh. is pretty shitty, but you don't it's have so to do that dumb. very often. It's like so almost, dumb. almost never. But what a great reveal that was. Anytime Nintendo actually comes out and like gives me something that I've been wanting for a long time, it's just kind of amazing. <laughs> Speaking of things that I've wanted for a long time, Chris. Yeah. A couple of years ago, watching E3, see a trailer, dudes are walking, looks pretty cool. If not, you know, somewhat unremarkable. And then, as the camera pans down, 
large man has gun for a hand. And the Final Fantasy VII HD remake <laughs> is officially announced. And oh, boy. It's never going to come out. Mm -mm. But holy shit, was I over the moon excited for that. I had actually predicted it on this show that it was going to happen. I said I would buy it for $100 if it did, and I will, because I'm a man of my word, Chris, but god damn it. I mean, the, the idea of that game remade with all the, the grandeur and glory of a current generation system, and by current generation, I do mean the PlayStation 6. Yeah, that's probably around when that's going to come out. And I'm fine um, with that. I really am. But the the level of hype and and anticipation for that had had been so strong for years. Yeah, people because since they showed off that tech demo, we're like, yeah, I, that, yeah, we could that we could it. do this. We're not gonna. <laughs> this. Yeah, I mean, they they made that that shitty ass movie, The Spirits yeah. Within, or whatever the fuck that was uh, advent children was the final fantasy 7 was and yeah but like, remember when they did the whole playstation 3 things like check this out this is what final fantasy 7 would look like on ps3 and everyone's like <gasps> you, <gasps> you're doing that can, can i like, can no, i have that no, that looks amazing they're like we're not doing this no we don't we don't want to do that <laughs> but why did thing. You, why did you do that to us it's not a thing we're gonna do and so people have been begging for it ever since but mm -hmm. mm. that's a great mm. moment but you want to talk about you want to talk about nailing an E3 presentation. That was... So Sony, in 2017, they were just making dreams come true. They really were. Because they started off with... Um, uh, My number one moment is their 2017 conference. Just in total, or... Uh... No, the, the opening of the 2017. Really? Yeah. With the God, flutes and stuff? God of War with the orchestra? Oh, is Dude. that what that was? That God of War? Yeah, the full orchestra, God of War, the first big reveal, the big gameplay. Kratos is a dad. Everything looking amazing. I mean, I thought the first. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at their 2017 press conference right now, and or maybe first, 2016. The first thing I'm seeing is um, uh, the Uncharted thing. Mm. I think they ended with God of War. No, 2016 with the the fucking the whole orchestra and the whole thing. Unless I'm wrong now, and that was the Sony conference. Oh, yeah, gotcha. But either way, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Okay. So my number two, mm -hmm. uh, E3 2010. Uh, we're at the Nintendo press conference, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Toro Wada comes out and he's like, all right, so here we are. It's been a good time. You may remember, I think it was last year, last January, we talked about uh, Project Sora. It's this thing that we kind of put together with uh, Sakurai from Smash Brothers mm. and a handful of other folks. Like, we just wanted to make some, some, they had a really good idea. Well, it turns out that idea was to make this specific game. And this specific game is this. And up on the screen, I recognize it immediately. Um, I imagine a lot of people didn't because it was kind of a deep cut. It starts off with uh, the, the, like the Queen of Darkness has returned, and it's Medusa. And I'm like, holy crap, you're kidding me. Yeah. And then they, 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 uh, the Palutena, Goddess of Light. And I'm like, no freaking way. And then Pit comes running out, runs through the door. Sorry to keep you waiting. Kid Icarus Uprising is, is revealed. For the first time in 20-some-odd years, there's a new Kid Icarus game coming, and holy heck, did it look nice. It Out of control. crazy, and it's still still one of my favorite 3DS games. On a system with a ton of great, great games, it's one of my favorites. Kid Icarus, Kid Icarus Uprising is a fantastic game that did well for Nintendo, but should have done better. Uh, should have done better. More people should have played it. Uh, unfortunately, it had a weird control scheme, got wrapped up in reviews, and people pay attention to reviews. Uh, as well they should. As well they should. Uh, more people should have put their put their hands on it, though, because it wasn't as bad as a lot of people made it out to be. And that game was amazing. And that reveal, they just they put all their muscle behind Kid Icarus. And it's something I've wanted them to do forever. And they actually did it. And it was incredible. It was incredible. What a great moment. Yes, very, very cool. I did just double-check myself, though. It was 2016. 
the E3 God of 2016. War. Okay. Yeah, the God of War, full orchestra. God of War was back looking just out of control. <laughs> That's right. Yep, you're right. I remember that now. I mean, just like because oh yeah this was incredible i forgot about this because you know, i'm looking got, at the 2017 one it's like all the flutes and all the fancy weirdo stuff happening in the background like which was cool it was but it was, no. was kind of cool but I yeah mean, this got of oh my god that's right this was such a good reveal full crazy orchestra <laughs> something that everybody like Every time there was an announcement, like, since the first God of War came out, it was like, all right, when's the next God of War? When's the next God of War? Yeah. I need, I need, I need more, more God of War in my life. And, and we had been a couple years, like, two, three years at this point into the PlayStation 4 without anything from God of War. Yeah, like, a couple of remasters here and there, but... Yeah, but not a new thing. And yeah, then to where's see, the new thing? To see this game... And, and it wasn't even a trailer. They didn't go into a trailer. They went into no, gameplay. Just the first twenty minutes of the game. Yeah, uh, just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Like I knew at that moment when it came out that would be my game of the year, and I can't imagine anything topping it this year. Unless maybe Guacamelee Two is that good if it comes out this year. But we'll they see. also. <laughs> Man, in E3 2016, they also showed off Horizon, and that was the thing that impressed the crap out of me. I remember looking at the God of War being like, wow, that's amazing, but Horizon really impressed the pants off of me. Yeah. Just looking at this game is like, it's it's so incredible looking. I can't wait to Killzone play this game. guys? No shit. Look at that. I always knew they could make good games. <laughs> yeah, that's that was nuts. Oh, and then like the rest, then things went off the rails when they started doing like the human... It was at Detroit Become Human, which I don't care about. And oh man, that is getting Batman rave stuff. reviews, though. Could not possibly care less. I know you couldn't. I am tagged out of that. That's fair. Oh, and this is when we got Death Stranding. <laughs> and also Death Stranding. I still don't know what the hell that's about. But what was so cool about that was that the announcement had only come a short time before where it was like, Kojima has left um, Konami, oh, yeah, and he's going to yeah. be working with Sony on his new project. And then, like, a few weeks later, he popped up on stage at E3 and was like, here's a fucking trailer. And we, what the fuck is this? It's like he walks out and says, here's a trailer for my new game. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Go nuts, internet. Try and figure this here's shit a, out. Here's Norman Reedus crying over his... Baby face. His throat. weird baby that just turned into oil. Yeah. And it's odd. he's butt naked. I'm super into it. I'm super <laughs> I into am it. I'm super not into it. Oh, I'm I super wait. into you talking about it. I don't want to go anywhere near this game. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't want it in my house. I think it's going to curse me or something. I am, I am completely 100% Jesse Spano about this game. Oh, and I then they followed so up excited. right after that with Spider Man. I'm so scared. And then they finished off with, uh, what the hell is this game? That Spider-Man game looks really good. I know you're not into that either, but god I damn feel like it, I, I should am, be. There's just I something about really that game that's rubbing me it. wrong. Is it his costume? Because there's other no, costumes. No, no, it's not the costume. That doesn't bug me. I, I can't, I really don't know what it is. I should be flipping out about this. I freaking love Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what it is about this game that's not hitting me right. And I, I love insomniac i think i know they're super talented i think the ration and clack games are cool from what little i've played of them i don't yeah, know sunset what it is overdrive about this is great it's just turning uh, me off i don't know why <sighs> <sighs> all right well i guess it's time for my number one okay it's a it's a shocker <laughs> it I, was a shocker at the time it was, it actually was. It was a legit shocker at the time because uh we're we're heading back to E three two thousand four on Nintendo's press conference. Uh and it was uh it was a it was a crazy show all around. Everybody had really cool stuff at E three two thousand four, but the game everyone was talking about was the way Nintendo ended their press conference. Because you started off with Prime 2, Star Fox, and Resident Evil Four. They announced the freaking Nintendo DS. They got a new new hardware amazing looking exclusives like of some really big names and we think we're good we're like all right that was a great show good good on you nintendo 
And uh, then Reggie says, but before you leave, I'd like you to step inside one more world for a Nintendo GameCube. But before you leave, I'd like you to step inside one more world for a Nintendo GameCube. And, uh, and, and it's pretty. A little field, a rainstorm, or whatever, and the Conan music starts. Uh, Conan music pitches in. As a, uh, the camera starts panning around, there's monsters all over the place, and then all of a sudden, on a horse, realistic adult Link draws a sword on horseback, and followed by just this incredible trailer of some of the craziest shit you ever saw. Because where we came from to get here I mean this was this is the moment that they talk about where if you're listening to the show and you somehow don't know this this is the moment they talk about where like E3 made grown men cry and this yeah. was people were in tears when this happened and I was one of them I there, was there has never been a bigger reaction I, there, yeah it's this is the like that Street Fighter moment where uh, the, the, the parry of Chun-Li Super this is E3's that it does yeah. not get bigger than this it was the biggest thing it was just amazing because here we are at the GameCube and when the GameCube was announced at Space World in 2000 they showed this incredible video of Link fighting Ganon in this uh, you know a, a, a adult Link art style it looked detailed it looked at the time absolutely amazing it's all anyone could talk about like I can't wait until that comes out for the for the GameCube and then they tur- then they announced and released Wind Waker, which was so far away from that initial reveal, a lot of people hated it at the time. Um, on principle. On principle, yeah. Like, this is not what we wanted. Turns out that turned... And I was one of those people. I was very vocal about the fact that I hated that. I still think that original trailer for, for Wind Waker looks, looks putrid. It just oh, looks... Oh, garbage. I, I hate it. I hate every flavor of it. Um... But when I finally played Wind Waker, I, the the turnaround when I actually got my hands on it and I realized that it's just it's just such a beautiful and amazing thing. It's my favorite game of all time. So here I am, like super happy with the direction of Zelda and thinking like, all right, I get it now. I'm I'm a little bummed that we're never going to get that hyper realistic Zelda, but I like the direction that they're heading now. So so I'm I'm pleased. My favorite franchise is in good hands and and I'm okay. And then to see this, this was. There was a shot where he's, you know, blocking arrows in the middle of the woods, and it looked like my imagination. It mm-hmm. looked like what I had always dreamed this world would look like. It's still one of the best things I've ever seen. Rewatching it, re- rewatching it today, that just earlier today, when that music comes, kicks on, you're just like, <gasps> ah, amazing. And then it's, you know, of course, followed up by Miyamoto coming out with a freaking Master Sword and Shield in his hands. And, and that is what ruined it for me. <laughs> I was totally fine with that. I, that. That was great. That moment. And I, and I do mean that sincerely. And that makes me kind of an asshole. But when Miyamoto came out, I was like, ah, oh, dude, he's such a nerd. <laughs> Stop Damn it. right, he's such a nerd. He's one of us, and that was that's just that's Stop hilarious. It. That that's the thing that ruined it for you, because that's the thing that sealed it for damn near everyone else. I know. Here's this freaking legend, the guy that made Zelda, just got just melted the brains of thousands of people, and then he comes out, and damn right, he gets to come out holding a sword and a shield and the one up T shirt. He's so freaking corny. Shigeru Miyamoto. It was awesome. Stop being corny, Miyamoto. Never, stop never it. stop being corny. Never stop being you. Holy crap! Yeah, no, I mean that that moment. It it really is amazing. It is it is truly only eclipsed by the Wii music moment of all of them on stage. Yeah, we want to talk playing poorly, and I don't know how. We want to talk about how bad things can get, but man. That moment, like, that is Nintendo, I think, in a nutshell. Well, that is right there why that moment was so amazing. Because if there's something Nintendo's good at, it's not giving you what you want. Yeah. Like, that is their thing. They give you what they want. And most of the time, it's what you never knew you wanted. Or it's something that, wow, they were right. This is this is incredible. And that happens all the time with them. Yeah, this but is a lot great. Of, Never mind. I was wrong. 
but they they very rarely just straight up give you what you want, like what the fans are begging for. That's why when Smash was revealed earlier this year, everyone lost their goddamn mind because they're like, there's no way that's going to happen. That's what we all want. That's what everyone's demanding right now. That's what we're asking for. That's what we're asking for. And Nintendo never just gives you what you ask for. And people have been asking for a realistic Zelda for the longest time, and they gave it right then and there. And Twilight Princess has a lot of faults. It's not my favorite Zelda game, but there there will never be anything to take away from the amazingness of that original original trailer. It's a better game than other M, hands down, but uh it's a uh, but it's, not, it's yeah, it's it's we've talked about that. Yeah. It's it's a great it, it's great in its own right, but no it did, didn't live up to the hype of that original trailer. No. But I don't think anything could. No, it really could. I mean, it really couldn't. But but if you want right. to talk, you want to talk about, uh, about the lightning the round, crowd. some shit. All right, quick lightning round, some shit. Uh, I think you got to mention Connect, Project Natal, all that, everything. Uh, the, the, the whole bleh. Connectimals thing bleh. with the bleh. terrible <laughs> kids up on stage. God, it was so dumb. <sighs> yeah, that was that Ugh. was it was nasty. It was cringe inducing at mm-hmm. best. Awful. Just awful. Um, what about the uh, the 2011 Skyward Sword? Miyamoto out there again, this time just waggling a Wii U controller and nothing happening. Nothing worked because you know nothing you can't you, you can't work uh, uh, something like that in a room filled with 350 thousand Wi-Fi signals bouncing no. around. No, it did just, not work. It at just didn't all. work. That was and sad, was so and that was what stopped them from doing E3 press conference. They never did another no. E3 press conference. That was it. That was the end. Because here, here's they could this legend. Not control the environment. Yeah, here's this complete legend, completely bombing, and it's like, all right, we're not doing this anymore. We have to change the way this is done. Yeah, because that was, was it was epically bad. It was, and it was it was sad because what he was showing off was cool. Mm-hmm. He was showing off what eventually, as long as you had the right you know, situation, they were showing off what everyone wanted the Wii to be from day one. Yeah. You could finally you hold the controller in your hand and swing Link's sword. And they made that game happen, and it was really cool. But that presentation was just so painful to watch. Uh, worse than that, though, Ubisoft 2011, Mr. Caffeine. Ah, uh, see, I raise you uh, Ubisoft 2010 with Joel McHale. Ooh, because yeah. it had Joel McHale, and he's not funny. I like Joel McHale sometimes. I think Do he's you? pretty funny. He's not funny, Chris. I like, guess that's... I mean, he was great as the bank manager in uh, Spider-Man 2. <laughs> even that. Like, that's like the worst part of Spider-Man 2. Nah. Like, never is there a moment where I see a trailer for something and I'm like, fuck yes, Joel McHale is in this. <laughs> like, every time I see him, I'm like, Fuck. I think Mr. Joel Caffeine, McHale Mr. Caffeine was worse than Joel McHale, man. Uh, they they were both. I mean, neither it wasn't of them great. Are, You're absolutely neither of them are Jamie Kennedy, also <laughs> Ubisoft. But uh, yeah, no, Ubisoft Mr. Caffeine was trash. Needs to stop. <laughs> yeah, they they have good good products. They just need to find a better way to package them because didn't press they also have bad. Aisha Taylor one year? A couple of years, yeah. God, and that was bad. I I like her, but. She's great. Those like Not those were that. difficult yeah. to get through because I, I, I could tell that she was trying to make the best of it because I don't think she wrote most of that stuff. No, but because uh, yeah, I think she's that. great. But those press conferences were less than fantastic. Archer, she's better than not. Joel McHale. Uh, we already talked about the Saturn available now. Um, really, for me, there's there's two worst press conferences ever. Uh, the, number one, uh, well, number two, let's say, the almost worse, all of Sony's E3 2006. I, I don't know how you can argue that anything is worse than that. Oh, oh, I, oh, I can and do. <laughs> because this was, this was terrible. This was, not only was it boring, but this was 599 US dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> but... 
five hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> did did you say five ninety nine? As in six hundred dollars? I, I think you misplaced at least two of those. Two hundred ninety nines. You need to. That's, you need to make that a little cheaper, there, guys. That's that's not all right. And like, and it was immediately and followed up with like, but technology is expensive, and you got to make a big investment for a big return. Like, I'm sorry. What did you say? And we're not going to mention the fact that we don't have rumble in the controllers anymore. And yeah, oh, look, no. it's Lair. It's l- oh. check out this Genji game that's based God. off of real real history these are real things that happened here's this giant enemy crab i'm sorry i'm sorry what what? you gotta stab it in its weak point for massive for massive damage so wait a second it's based on real things that happened here's the giant enemy crab well i I mean it it was a documentary (laughs) it was it was another time and then of course the time of giant crabs was this this was PSP, right? And this was before Vita. So this was PSP and, oh, and him saying Ridge Racer. Racer. <laughs> the best part about that is that not only does he go, and look, it's Ridge Racer, but he immediately, without even taking a fucking breath to like let that <laughs> moment land, because Ridge Racer had been like a stable of Sony launches, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It was a but stable of even, every launch, not just with, Sony. <laughs> Without even taking a breath, it goes, Ridge Racer, remember that one? Like, like yeah. fuck you, like, your big reveal is some old shit, you That's dick. not great. This, oh, this, and so it was bad. presented, it wasn't even that this information was terrible, it's that it was also presented terribly. Oh, Just by a bland, bunch of dudes. It was boring. presented by a bunch of dudes who knew that they were about to go bomb. They Did knew they that though? They it. They I feel like they. Work. I feel like they believed in this. I feel like they were coming out like these were a bunch of suits that didn't know that they were about to bomb. That's how it reads to me. It always read to me that these guys thought they were coming out like, all right, we might get some pushback, but we've got some hot shit right here, and. They Man, didn't. did they miss the mark on that the one. Mark was missed. Hard. One of the greatest turnarounds in video game history is the PlayStation 3. Because Without that question. thing, that thing did not come out on fire, and the Xbox 360 was trouncing it, and they won that generation, and that's insane. It is. All and, and of the props to Sony for that. I mean, that's what... I, I don't know what your number one is, because I don't do show prep. Um, <laughs> but... Coming, especially coming off the the global domination that was the PlayStation Two, yeah, to then land with the biggest of possible thuds with the PlayStation Three conference <laughs> and the six hundred dollars and the fucking ugly fat console and the stupid Spider Man font and just everything about it was garbage mm-hmm. of the highest caliber well what's worse than that chris what's worse than that let's 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 travel back to a time a sad strange time in video game history 2008 mm. nintendo's e3 press conference the entirety of nintendo's 2008 pre- e3 press conference is pain is I don't just even remember it. Sadness it? and sorrow. Uh, this is, uh, if you really want a great recap of this year, um, the uh, Arlo, the YouTube channel Arlo, uh, he's, a, he's a blue Muppet who's mm. very entertaining. He just did a whole retrospective on this. So this is, this is the weeest of, of years. This is just dripping with that we mentality. Is so, this we music? This is Wii Music and okay. so much more. That's the only thing I remember from it. Unless the Vitality Sensor was that year as well. I think it may have been. Uh, it starts with Cammy Dunaway, who was um, just this completely out of touch. I'm sure she's a perfectly lovely woman. But having her do this presentation to a bunch of gamers, like she comes, she comes out with like this Mother's Day card. Because she's like just playing up that she's a mom. Mm-hmm. And then she starts playing Sean White snowboarding on the Wii Balance Board with Sean White. And Sean White's oh. doing all this like terrible 
forced laughter. He's clearly baked out of his mind because he would have to be. Well, and he's Sean White. And he's Sean White. Uh, so they're on the Wii balance board playing Sean White snowboarding, which doesn't look great. And she's playing with him with her Wii remote uh, you know, wrist strap on for, for maximum protection. And it's really uncomfortable. Like, it is of the uncomfortable moments that could be at E3, it's just right up there. And then Iwata comes out, and he starts giving a bunch of business figures and talks great things about games. It's like, you know, I, I like listening to Iwata talk, but now we're cool. talking about Wii Sports and Wii Play and Guitar Hero Legends of Rock and just those casual things. And then we finally get a new game, Animal Crossing. All right. <laughs> Now, this I didn't realize until I watched that Arlo video. This was actually the only core game announced at this entire press conference was Animal Crossing. That was it. (laughs) That was the only, like, here's the new Nintendo game that you're going to get that people care about. Now, Reggie comes out, gives all these sales figures, and they're talking about Mario and Sonic and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. The Wii is selling a whole lot of units, and we get some that crappy Clone Wars game, Guitar Hero Mm. on Tour. Spore is coming to, to DS. Now Cammy Dunaway is back out. <laughs> and uh, now we're talking about Wii Sports Resort. And this was their big game. Wii Sports Resort. Mm. Now I've got I'm... Bill Trinan and Cammy Dunaway waving their hands around, pretending to throw a frisbee to a cute little dog avatar as, as a me. And yeah. this, is, this is what we're getting here. This yeah. is... This is so uncomfortable to look at. It is amazing. It's like, how is this even real? And it, but it just keeps going. They do the silly sword fighting thing, and they're all out there waving their hands around like jackasses. And just when you don't think it could get any worse, they wheel some ass clown out with a mohawk sitting on a drum throne with a Wii balance board under his feet and a Wii remote nunchuck in his hands, and he starts playing drums. And he just goes in this silly-ass drum solo. And then That's not even good. Wii music. And then Miyamoto comes out and starts tooting his little trumpet version of the Mario theme poorly. <laughs> Very poorly. And they start yammering on and on about Wii music. This is the big thing. You thought Wii Sports Resort was it, but no. This is what they're going out on. And then they have a bunch of executives for Nintendo come out and play, <laughs> just play this awful music in Wii Music. And that's how they end it. Just dancing up there like the world is about to end and they have no idea. And we're here at Did E3 that game just- even come out? When music it did, I, it did come out. I own it. It's is not it terrible. No, nah, it's I... it's a cute toy, is what it is. It's like I put yeah. it in my son's hand. You know, I put it in John's hand, and it's neat. It's it's, but it's a toy. It's it's not even really a game. It's not a rhythm game. It's just like you can use your Wii remote in these funny little ways to make different instruments and learn a little bit about music. I get it. Like when I actually played it, when I bought it on clearance for literally two dollars, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I paid for the damn thing. If I took if it home, your I... big game closer or if your big show closer ever ends up in a two dollar clearance bin, you have done shit the bed. You you have done things wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at this like it. These are the things that they had these huge, huge chunks of time dedicated to just really swinging for that casual market at E3. Talk about not speaking to your audience. Yeah, the cat, mom, mom and grandma weren't watching the E3 conference like, I can't wait to see what the hot new casual shit is. They casually glossed over the fact that they had a brand new exclusive Grand Theft Auto game coming to the DS. Like, yeah, we partnered with these guys. They're making Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars for DS. That's pretty cool, huh? That's anyway, pretty cool. Here's a vitality sensor. Here's Rayman Raving Rabbit's TV party. Yay. Oh, gross. I'm like, holy Ugh. crap, guys. You should have spent some time on GTA Chinatown Wars because then maybe somebody else would have too. Because <laughs> apparently that game was great, but nobody bought it. <laughs> I still oh. don't think it's worse than the Sony conference, but it, it's, it's pretty awful. Oh, it's, it's the, what makes this worse for me 
is that the Sony conference is so much bad material, but this <coughs> one's this one's uncomfortable. This one's like actually hurts. Like watching this woman parade around, flapping her arms around with. The, she is probably yeah. very good at her job. This should never have been her job. This should not have been her job. No, watching See, I, this I, coming off what other people were bringing to the table at this point, and this is what they were. This is what this is them swinging for the fences, and it's just not good. I think the reason it doesn't hit that high for me is because I had already. You had already to the realization <laughs> of what the we was at that point, so none of that was a surprise. I this was, you know holding, what I mean. It, you know, it was kept like, holding out hope. Like son of a bitch, they've taken my PlayStation Three and made it into a system for my mom. Like the we was a system for my mom, and she's yeah. a horrible person. <laughs> So I think that has a lot together. to do with why I like that other M reveal the a year mm-hmm. later, because the next year after after this debacle of putrid horribleness, finally Nintendo's like, no, we haven't forgotten completely about you guys. We still do want to make games for you. We're not going to do a very good job, but it's going to look great right now. <laughs> I remember sitting on my couch in Lakeland, Florida, with Tiff watching Shigeru Miyamoto and all those other asshats parade around and play. There was a guy in a fucking, it's like there was the Mohawk dick and then Miyamoto and then some fucker in like a, like a shiny blue button down tucked into his pants. And like they're just, he's playing the trumpet or some bullshit. Like he's just dancing around like a fucking idiot up on stage. And like the conference ends and, like, <sighs> Tiff looked over at me, and she goes, Well, that was some bullshit. <laughs> Got up and walked away. She was right. That was some bullshit. Because, like, she... We had purchased the Wii only a little bit before that conference, and she was really excited. Like, we were both really excited about it, of, like, this is going to be fun, and we can play together, and, like, yada, yada. And, like, we played the shit out of our Wii for, like, the first week that we had it and then it like was the netflix for the girls but like we were hoping to get back and she like she was mad after that that was bad god i just turned the volume up oh my god i gotta Isn't turn that, this off there's again. a dude in like a blue shirt like a yeah, royal a dude blue in the blue shirt down. is tooting around on the trumpet ass clown on the the drums is back there i'm sure oh. he's a great drummer I'm sure he's I've never not. Heard him before. <laughs> and, if and, you're uh, a great drummer, you don't find yourself in those situations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. As 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 a drummer, if somebody's paying me a bunch of money to get up on stage and play with Shigeru Miyamoto, like how do you how do you know ahead of time this is going to be too like terrible? Like as a virtual quick little play drum set, that's kind of neat, you know. All right, no. it functions, but yeah. oh boy, yeah. oh boy. Still not six hundred dollars. Six hundred U.S. dollars. Five hundred ninety-nine U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. Good lord. Well, Ugh. It, it, as Dan and I could argue through the night about who t- who hurt us worse, Sony or Nintendo. But uh, show me on the doll where Shigeru Miyamoto <laughs> touched you. He made tooting noises right so, here, drop. right on my mouth. <laughs> All uh, right, that's that our took show. A turn. <laughs> that, that's our show. That was fun. We're so excited for E3. I mean, I know I am. Um, I'm excited for next week's episode. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I'm excited for next. I'm excited for all the, the next handful of episodes because everything around E3, I'm so stoked for. I have no idea. Like, I have no idea what to expect from Microsoft because who the hell knows what they do? <laughs> they're <laughs> they're going to cut the price of the Xbox uh, Scorpion. Um, they're going to announce the Xbox Sub Zero, yeah. um, and it's going to be ninety nine dollars. Going to be amazing. That's what that's what the system is called now, right? Ninety nine Xbox dollars. Scorpion, yes. ninety nine no Canadian dollars, <laughs> unmarked Canadian francs. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what Sony's going to do. Like I don't know what they have in the pot because they they've had like you know, God of War and Horizon in the last two years, and yeah, those are pretty big. Their their heavy hitters are like they're out there now. Like, what do they have next? And are they going to kind of take it easy and rest on their laurels and just release a handful of 
here's some really cool stuff that's happening. And, or are they going to come out with something else that's just going to blow our freaking minds? I don't know. I don't know. That's You're awesome. going to have to tune in next week for our predictions, Chris. You are. And Nintendo's got Smash. I'm... I'm already sold. So who the hell yeah. knows what else they're they're coming out with? I'm so excited. So so that's that's it. Next week we're gonna do our E3 predictions show. We're gonna be wrong about damn near everything as we usually are. Uh, I think I'm Dean wants to join right. us for that too. So uh, that should be. I fun. don't know how I feel about that. That's I not some shit you spring on me on the show, Chris. It's like <laughs> asking me and like like you're the kid asking in front of mom and dad if your friend can sleep over while they're standing right there in front of me. <laughs> like, I'm. <laughs> I, I I don't even know for sure if he is, but I, I feel like I've had that conversation with him. I don't know, but uh, it's going to be fun. Once again, you can get in touch with us at com as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris. That's Geekade K-R-I-S. And Dan, tell the nice people where they can find you. At Geekade Dan. If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out the show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher, where if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. And we'd like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we have a link to in the show notes. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com for even more fresh original content. That's it, everybody. Thank you for listening. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to play more Mega Man. Keep playing games. (laughs) 